turmeric side effects. My name is Dave, I'm a pharmacist, and this is turmeric. You'll see the raw form on the left and the dry powdered form on the right, which is much more convenient. The problem with the dry powdered form is lead contamination. So why is that? Uh, the producers basically look at the end product and sometimes they say to themselves, it's not colorful enough, it's not bright enough, I don't think people will buy it. So they add lead chromate to enhance the brightness. Now lead is very toxic. So if you're buying the dry powdered version of turmeric, make sure you trust the source. Number one category of side effects with turmeric is gastrointestinal upset. So diarrhea, nausea, and increased frequency of bowel movements, usually resolving spontaneously after one to three days. Next, we're concerned about kidney stones. Turmeric has a high concentration of oxalate. So that oxalate can bind to calcium in the kidney and form crystals, which we call kidney stones. So that's another thing to look out for. Uh, gallbladder contractions. So this paper down here cited at the bottom proved that curcumin induces the contraction of the human gallbladder. If you don't have gallstones, what would happen is the contents would be expelled and you would actually be less likely than to develop gallstones. But if you have gallstones and you're taking something that causes your gallbladder to contract, that could trigger severe pain. So that's something to be aware of. Next, topical reactions. These are very rare. So the documented case numbers are very small. Contact urticaria, that's like hives. They reported two cases in this paper. And allergic contact dermatitis, it says here a few cases have been reported. So very rare. And what that means when I say contact, I mean the turmeric has come into contact with the skin and as a consequence, these sort of allergic reactions have developed. The question we all want to know the answer to, is turmeric safe? Well, if you read this paper that I cited at the top here, uh, it says curcumin has been demonstrated to be safe in six human trials. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? But what they don't tell you is that those human trials were very small. Uh, if you read the next quote from a different paper, some studies suggest that curcumin possesses both pro and antioxidative effects. That's important, and that's dose dependent. So basically, what they found was at low doses, turmeric or uh, curcumin has a antioxidative effect. That's what we want. But at high doses, there was a pro-oxidative effect. Why does that matter? Anything that promotes oxidation could, in the end, damage DNA and cause a mutation that gives rise to cancer. So that's why we care. And this is not unique to turmeric. It reminds me of vitamin C. Vitamin C is similar in that lower doses have an antioxidant effect, but high doses can be pro-oxidative. If you were to walk into a store right now to purchase a turmeric supplement, if you look at the labels, you're probably going to see some sort of statement about absorption, like ultra high absorption or high bioavailability formulation, something to that effect. And according to this paper I cited at the bottom of the slide, back in 2014, they documented 46 different bioavailability enhanced formulations of curcumin. That is a lot, and that was nine years ago. So I wouldn't be surprised if now that number was much higher. But my question is, is ultra high absorption even safe? I'm tempted to say no based on this paper which found that uh, low doses of curcumin did not induce DNA damage and may prevent cancer whereas high doses were found to impose oxidative stress and damage to the DNA. They said that consuming high doses of curcumin should be avoided and the co-ingestion of piperine containing foods with curcumin should be limited. What do I mean by piperine containing foods? Well, I didn't show you this information, but piperine is a component of black pepper, which happens to enhance the bioavailability of curcumin by 2000%. And for that reason, black pepper is commonly combined with turmeric 
and sold as a supplement. So they're saying that would not be safe to take. Uh, so we have more questions, basically. Uh, what is the optimal dose of turmeric? And where do you find lead-free turmeric powder? And I'm going to be making videos addressing these exact questions. So if this is of interest to you, please subscribe and follow along. Meanwhile, if you or anyone you know has had an ablation for AFib and you're interested in doing everything you can to minimize the risk of a recurrence, then you may be interested in my book. It's available at DaveRx.com. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.